Yeah, it's me, Kevin Smith. Welcome back to Sunday. It's 2019. We're at the IMDb studio here at Acura Festival Village. And look, it's the director and the cast of Fighting With My Family. Give it up for him, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Stephen, one of the only reasons I agree to do these sort of things is because it gives me a chance to interact with people whose stuff that I've loved or that touched me deeply. Uh, you were one of the people I was most looking forward to. We've never really interacted, but I have spent hours, hours in worlds you've created. Uh, so much, I love The Office so much. Recently I went to, to, to London to visit the set of Star Wars with J.J. Abrams, and I, they, I said, where can I stay while I'm out there? It's a Pinewood. And they were listing a bunch of places, and they were like, you could stay at Slough. I was like, Slough? That's a real place? <laughs> and they were like, yeah. I was like, I definitely want to go there. They're like, are you sure? I said, like, I love The Office. Like, then you know what it looks like. And shit. <laughs> but I went, because I'm a massive fan. So a moment like this, I just take say, Thank you, you've given me so much joy. And as somebody who like writes for a living, to find somebody who also writes for a living that entertains them and makes me put my stuff down, I take my hat off. Well, likewise, too. sir. I'm a big fan. I was always, you know, just mentioning before we started here, and uh, I will listen to you talk about your adventures with Bruce Willis <laughs> until I, my dying day. <laughs> it's, it's very verified <laughs> breathing, but thank yeah. you. Uh, this movie, man, I watched the trailer. It's fantastic. Thank you. Were you a wrestling fan? I was not a wrestling fan. I became one during the course of making this film. Um, I was attracted to the story. It's uh, Paige's real life story that we're telling, although she's played in the movie by Florence. Um, and I, it began life as a documentary that was on British TV, and uh, the documentary was sent to me by my dear friend and gym buddy, uh, Dwayne Johnson. And, um, no, because he doesn't have the discipline. I need to push him, otherwise he's just, he's just straight down the, the pizza factory. He uses a, a barbell. <laughs> he uses me as a barbell, yeah. And, uh, and anyway, it was a really inspiring, uplifting, funny story in which she and her brother uh, are Norwich wrestlers with her family, and they have to go off and train, or, or I should say audition for the WWE. Only Paige got signed and her brother got left behind. And it's, you know, it's a story of her being away from home, kind of finding herself while she's in America, and, and how the family, uh, you know, deal with the fact that she's no longer there and as I say a funny and it's uplifting story and um, and you know there we are good night see you, everyone <laughs> <laughs> so well done what is uh, did who did did Dwayne come to you? Dwayne, like I know. Did well, Mr. Johnson come to you? You're, or? A, you're, a, you're a movie buff. Yes. And so I'm sure I'm right in saying that one of your favorite films is Tooth Fairy. Tooth Fairy, yes. Yeah. It's got yeah. hockey in it, so right. I watched that there movie. There you go. So you love Tooth Fairy. Uh, you're welcome. And um, uh, and so we stayed in touch over the years. And uh, and, and he saw this documentary on British TV. And he, and he firstly he t he told Paige he wanted to make a movie about her life. And then his second choice, well, I think there's only two English people in his phone, me and Jason Statham. Right. And uh, Statham is not as fast a typist as I am. <laughs> So uh, he came to me, <laughs> yeah. That makes sense. Did you ever, in a million years, think that there'd be first a documentary and then a feature film about your life and adventures? Well, the documentary, yes, because growing up with my family, they love to be on TV. So they're like, <laughs> growing up, I was constantly in front of like a documentary camera. It didn't go very far, obviously, outside of Norwich. Right. But uh, this documentary, however, did very well, and I was very happy. I never thought in my life that I would have a movie, especially at 26 years old. <laughs> I was like, what the? This is bananas. I know. When you have yeah. a biopic at 26, it's essentially the world's yeah. like, hang it up, you're done. Yeah, and look at the cast I have, too. This yeah. is fantastic. Like, wow. <laughs> It's true. What does one go after this? What was it like the watching sequel. somebody... The sequel, of course. What is it like watching somebody play you? It was very strange at first. The first time I watched it, like, I couldn't even... I couldn't watch it. I was crying my eyes out too much. I couldn't see through, you know, anything. But the second time, I was just like, wow. Like, she blew me away. I was like, first of all, aesthetically, way more pleasing than what I actually am. So, beautiful. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> I am, I'm long, yeah. Um, but she did such a fantastic job. And, and I didn't actually get to meet her until after the movie was... Uh, done. Yeah. We, we met each other a couple of weeks ago. For the first time And it was ever. the most beautiful embrace I've so ever had in my life. Yeah. So did yeah. you absorb, did you just watch a lot of I mean, Yeah, video? I mean, the, 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 the greatest thing about her is that she, you just type in her name and there's so many videos, whether it's wrestling or her talking to anyone in the crowd or doing interviews. So I wasn't, I wasn't scared by that. Obviously, it's like, it's lovely to meet people beforehand, but um, she was suffering with her neck injury and was around the world and it just didn't map out. But then we met each other. Well, we were chatting all the way through. She called me all the time yeah. though. I was like, <laughs> sis, you need to back up a lot. Sorry. When playing somebody, uh, obviously, like, how do, you, how do you keep it from going into impression and keep it as performance? How much of you do you keep in it I, versus I'm, how much of the person you're trying to portray? I think that's probably the scariest thing about playing someone that not only is still alive, but also is not that far away from your age. Like, she's very much here. It's not like I'm gonna try and figure it out and, and figure out how, how I also want it to 
to be betrayed. But I think um, that being said, at some point I have to bring a little bit of me to it and I have to make sure that I understand why I'm doing it. And so you kind of have to, st- well, amalgamation, I suppose, is, mm. is for me was the best way to do it. And obviously I, I have so many voice notes to listen to. Like, <laughs> oh, that's the accent. Right, it's big catch to that. Um, the brother, correct? Yeah, that's me. <laughs> Carrying the emotional weight of the story. What, did you speak to the person you're playing? This is one of those rare opportunities where everybody can be like, let me meet my counterpart. Yeah, I did, and I, I had the benefit of Zach was around a few times during filming and is actually in the film um, uh, playing a, a drug dealer. Um, so <laughs> uh, it, it was it was great fun with him, and he's but but I, I find him such an amazing man. He's such a very he's a big larger than life. He's literally larger than life. He's a big man, but he he's a very he's a very loyal bloke. And what I love about the story is that he you know he he didn't get in, but he 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 does he now solely run the WAW in Norwich. Yeah. And I went I was lucky enough to go up there. Steve was there, went up and watched a show there. Um, one night, which was just the best night out I've ever had, and people in people in the UK talk about going out to like the darts and snooker and stuff like that, and the panto. And I think th- that wrestling does all of those things, and then times it by ten. It's like the best night out ever, and just to see Zach in that environment, and he was there with a couple of his kids, and he was like literally putting up the ring with holding one kid, and it was, it was, it was, he's, he's an amazing guy. He's an amazing guy. Um, were you in Dunkirk? I'm looking at you going like. Do yes, I, I was in Dunkirk. Dunkirk? Yeah. He's the one that doesn't drown. Yes, I'm the one that I'm the ah. one that I'm the one that's not Tom Hardy. <laughs> yes. the, yeah. the, uh, so you've, you've worked with Chris Nolan. You've been directed by Chris Nolan. You've been directed by Stephen. Who would Don't make a better ask. no? Who would make a better Batman movie? Oh. Oh. Oh, Listen, I tell you, I used to collect Batman through all my childhood. I was you a avid reader. Batman. I could see it in you. you I know, could see it. I personally would like to see Steve play Robin. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to Bale's Batman. Yes. With the baggy leggings. Yes. yes. <laughs> all right. And bare legs. <laughs> Absolute bare legs. Uh, my lord, uh, this is like it's. it's ah, I, first, I got to get over the whole like why you treat your brother so bad and shit like that. <laughs> I, I imagine you deal with that all the Should time. Save me. <laughs> um, this movie, Fighting with, with, my, with My Family, could be the subtitle for the, the, the show that you're most well known for, Game of Thrones. A lot of fighting with the family there as well. What is it like to throw off a thousand pounds of costumery and play a real person? But to be fair, Cersei's a real person too, just a real bad person. Yes. Uh, it, it was thrilling for me. I, I saw the documentary like 10 years ago. Loved it, fell in love with everybody, and then along came the script, and so I was really excited. And Paige's mom is an incredible personality, and so to play her, and like you say, someone that's still around, and still kind of the biggest personality, was a massive challenge. And I just didn't want to fuck it up. <laughs> like that was my only goal. Did you get to meet her and chat with her? I haven't dance? met her yet. Really? No, I'm really excited to meet you. So in, in that world where like, where you didn't get to see the performance while it was happening, when you sat down and watched it for the first time, is there any part where you're like, man, that didn't happen, that wouldn't be me, that wouldn't, or did, did they get your family right? No, they nailed it. No, they, they really, truly nailed it. And that's not just being biased, like, they did amazing, like every every single one of them. Like, uh, like even my dad was like, super happy. We keep telling this story about my dad <laughs> because all he wanted was Ray Winston to play him. <laughs> <laughs> and he, close in the end. Very close. But he yeah. he was just because he doesn't say he likes Laurel and Hardy and stuff like that, you know. And so he doesn't really know modern actors and stuff. So I, I said, no, Nick Frost, amazing. You need to watch his stuff, Dad. He's, he's incredible. He's, he's going to do you justice, right? And he's just like, whatever. <laughs> so he watches it back and he's like, oh, he's actually pretty good, isn't he? Yeah, he's fantastic. But yeah, he absolutely loved it. But he nailed it. I think I saw the, the inner romantic in your dad. And that's my dad's going to love you. I know it. I know it. He's very excited to meet you. Know? I'm not. Ray's, Ray's not as nice as me in real life. So I think it will make the premiere easier, you know. <laughs> I once described you as one of the ten men that I would blow in this world. Wow. Yes. Well, I... Really? I'm chopped liver? <laughs> <laughs> After the Robin roll, perhaps. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't seen that list on Maybe you're just too big. 
Uh, uh, but I've my recently point... just had a new baby, so I'm not getting much of that. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's any, get snowed any port in. in a storm. Let's do the sun dance. <laughs> um, what is it like playing a dad? Like, I don't think of you as dad uh, yeah, material. I don't although you just remember how that happened. Yeah. <laughs> that happened. Uh, and then I've suddenly got like a 26-year-old <laughs> child. Uh, uh, it's just it's how it is, right? I guess. Um, I know, Ricky's kind of... I, I got him, you know, from watching the documentary, and I think once I realised what his motive was as a person, and that is a working-class man who wants to do right by his kids and will do anything for that, then it made my job a lot easier, really. Um, what is it like being away from the Simon and Edgar? Oh, and you, I the, love the it. the last few... <laughs> I love it. Any... any any like junkie I can go on where I don't have to hear Edgar laughing every few minutes like that. <laughs> uh, is fine by me. I'll tell him you said that. Um, I'll sir? tell him I said Yeah, that. you will, I know. I sir, see it. how have you been, man? Um, into the mic, sorry, we gotta get you Doing place. terrific, doing terrific. Well, you know, I just get so taken back by this village, the Acura Village. <laughs> I didn't expect the snow to be here and yet not be that cold, so excuse me if the aesthetics have spoken to me. But yes, fantastic. An artisan bakery at the That's back. right, that's right. The, uh, the, when you were doing the boxing movie, like you got you trained and you got like real cut and whatnot, what, playing an ex-wrestler, how does one prepare for that? Well, you know, what was interesting was being more kind of older when I met the guys, a lot of them are really banged up and can't exercise as much anymore. I mean, you, Paige can speak to that obviously a lot more, but I went down uh, in Los Angeles, you guys set me up, and just the athleticism of these people, the girls that were involved, like the flips and stuff are really dangerous. So I had a great appreciation for, as we were talking about, the falling without getting concussion and you know all of that stuff. The commitment of these guys with the dream is unique because wrestling in itself is kind of performance. So it was very eye-opening and kind of, kind of thrilling to meet these kids because the chance to get injured is very high and the odds of you know, getting to be uh, uh, in WWE or moving up is very slim. So there's a real passion and it was really interesting to see. Um, you come from, uh, like me, indie film world. The, the swingers didn't play here, but like- No, you... swingers was turned down by Sundance. Let it go, Vince. Let no, it go. Let's it's talk fine. about that, man. But, you know what? You were an inspiration for us, and that in having done Clerks, it was sort of a, a light post to look at and go, look at this guy. He made his movie, and he found a way. And I, I remember Matty Rich did one. Uh, straight out of Brooklyn. Right, prior to with credit cards and stuff. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, when you, I mean, starting from indie film world, you've gone, obviously, to all ends of the spectrum, with the exception of pornography. That's mm -hmm. all that's left. Mm -hmm. How how has the journey for you been? Well, you know, I, I think we've said this before, but it's like you kind of want to ride all the rides at the amusement park as you get older. So I had a lot of fortune and good luck younger, and now you know I've had a chance to do different types of things, which I quite enjoy. So, you know, it's all storytelling, and it's just different things that you get excited about. Um, I mean, as you know, you've done it as well. So I think, isn't it? to some degree, something new that you haven't done feels interesting, I'd, I'd ask you the same. I just keep doing the same shit over and over again, so I don't look for new territory. I'm on you Clerks have, 25 No, but right you now. have, you've done really small movies. We're about to start movies. Jay and Silent Bob reboot. That's I keep awesome. doing the same shit. Yeah, yeah, but you've done larger studio stuff as well. Yeah, I've yeah, played yeah. around there and yeah, stuff. Yeah. Um, it, but it's weird, right? Like starting from where we started and then like... Well, because you're, like, so, you're I, so sort of outside of it, yes. right? And you're just creating in kind of a small thing with your friends. Mm -hmm. And then when it becomes, you know, a different thing than that, the experience is different. There's nothing as intimate as that first kind of... And isn't it weird? Like for me, this is my 25th year in the business. And my 25th year at Sundance has got to be close to like 24, 23 for you. For sure. Isn't it weird to have longevity and stuff to stick around? Yeah, it's, you know, it's always... It's nice to be able to do what you love to do, for sure. Um, a live snake in there, isn't it? Yeah, you're going to throw something <laughs> Sorry. There's no live snake in there. It's just this... you're in the Acura Village. At some point, you're going to get cold. <laughs> you got to keep it warm, right? This is the winter hat. What we do is we put questions in here. We ask you to pick a question. Everybody answer this question. Okay. Real okay. simple. Then we let you go into that cold night. Well, if you could star in a biopic about anybody, <laughs> who would it be? <laughs> wow. <laughs> what a great choice. Probably Paige. Oh, that makes sense. Do you know her? <laughs> she, she's, I know her. Yeah. She's like this little uh, wrestler. She's doing all right, actually. Um, but they had, there's like this little documentary that went yeah, around. Screaming Goff Girl. I'd probably, girl, I I'd probably play her. I don't know. I'll think about it. All right. What about you, pretty Darth Vader? Uh... <laughs> That's what I think of a Cersei, pretty Darth Vader. She's like the most evil person in the world, but like, boy, she's pretty. Okay. 
I think I play, you know, a, a little known wrestler, Sweet Soraya, uh, <laughs> who's pretty fabulous. Yeah. Nice, Paul. You? Ray Winstone, right? <laughs> Maybe Ray or Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> um, Churchill. Winston Churchill. I think as being a big guy, there's only so many roles you can play in. Um, I just hope when Churchill dies, they look at me to play him. <laughs> Are you confusing Churchill with Gary Churchill. Oldman? He's still around. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> can I just point out that the new Acura comes um, with air conditioning as standard. <laughs> as standard. Thanks. Precision and performance, <laughs> which makes it a good fit for the festival. Up to you, Mr. Vaughn. Biopic? Well, liking a, a challenge, I'd love to have the opportunity, and I hate, I hate to come off kind of arrogant saying so, but to play Stephen Merchant. Yep. To play someone taller than me would be kind of a challenge to try to, <laughs> well, to carry off like that height without actually having that kind of height, but try to find a way to- Acting to tall. Right, acting tall would be, would be a challenge. <laughs> Someone with uh, good looks and, and uh, uh, a quick tongue would be a lot of fun to play. Thank you. Can, we, can we see a glasses switch real quick to I'd see if to. it would work? I'd love to, but wait a minute. This could put me in character. Hold on. Gone. I can't see a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Neither can I. Rock us with a little, rock us with a, a little bit of merchant. Can you pull off the accent? Oh, I have to pull. I, I couldn't. I couldn't prepare yet. I, I, I wouldn't be able. I, I, that would be a deep dive. Would you spend a lot of time following me around? I would. I would. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Sir. Sir. Um, I've always wanted to play someone shorter than myself <laughs> in, in that same vein. I've always wanted to experience life from a different height. So I think either that or um, uh, Ross Kemp, if anyone knows who Ross Kemp is. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'd love to play Ross Kemp. You'd be a good Danny Dyer. Yeah, but he's not got the depth at Kemp. No, but still, you would be. Kemp was in the SAS. You know, it's a joke question, but go as deep as you like, man. <laughs> Steven? Do you know who I, I would like to play is, so I, I'm sure you know this as a, as a movie fan, the man inside the Darth Vader. David the Prowse. Darth, David Prowse was from Bristol, where I'm from. Oh, wow. And uh, so before James Earl Jones voiced the voice, you'd have heard someone who sounded like me saying, <laughs> all right, Luke, I'm your father, <laughs> Neil Babber. <laughs> Uh, you know, don't be running away. What are you doing? Come back here. <laughs> so I'd like to play him because apparently he didn't discover they had revoiced him until he was at the premiere. Oh. Yeah, we'll find out. Wait till tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Give it up for the folks for fighting with my family.